Turner was a precocious artist, a, pre a, a prodigy. And this was recognized by art patrons of the time, by wealthy supporters and friends. And so they pooled their money together to send him on his first trip to Switzerland in 1802. It was at a time when the hostilities between Britain and France had been uh, suspended briefly by the Treaty of Amiens. And so he had the opportunity to go to Paris, to the Louvre and see the great old masters who were at the Louvre, and then go on from Paris to Grenoble and all the way through Switzerland, uh, really immersing himself in the mountain scenery that had so fascinated him. And so he traveled uh, by carriage, uh, by horse and carriage. He bought them in France, and then by boat, and then by foot. And so he actually made a long trip throughout Switzerland. And when, he, when possible, he would climb into the mountains and try to get the sense of the, the, the presence, the physicality of the places that he put himself in. And they were oftentimes very precarious situations. He couldn't carry oil, oil paints and canvases with him, of course, as he clambered up the, the steep side of a mountain. So he carried sketchbooks with him and did quick sketches, drawings of glaciers, of cliff sides, of rocks, of clouds bursting over the, uh, uh, the, the sun bursting through the clouds. Um, and then he would take these back and then fill them in with watercolor. So there's that sense of immediacy of the drawing, and then the sense of reflection back in the studio where he would actually kind of fill in the color. But it's an extraordinary moment, really the turning point, I think, in Turner's evolution, because he realized the importance of personal experience, being there. It's not just an act of the imagination. It's actually really critical for an artist to have that firsthand knowledge, that sense of of uh, being in the middle of the mountains and not something that you're looking at as if through a window.